the movement Cops for COVID Truth. I know, you know who's coming. <laughs> In a letter to the New South Wales Police Commissioner in October 2020, he questioned the unlawful and unjustifiable enforcement of COVID restrictions. The letter catapulted this man into the public spotlight and led to his decision to resign from the force so he could keep speaking out. He has served 12 years in the New South Wales Police and today he spends his time encouraging officers to think critically about the COVID narrative and restoring community trust. So please give a big warm welcome to our gorgeous buddy in blue, it's Alex Cooney! I'm going to watch her, I think she's got a hot spoon. <laughs> Uh, look, firstly, um, as always, uh, deep respect and thanks, thanks to the Indigenous people of this community who have welcomed us here today. Okay. Their people are still being used as the guinea pigs for these agendas, um, and they've gone through a lot. So, from my heart, as always, as I've always mentioned, first up, is that it's really important that, that we back these people and we're fighting for them. To the, to the lovely people who keep putting these reclaimed lines together. Um, they're the unsung heroes who don't really get much applause, but thank you, thank you for bringing this for us. All right. Um, I'd like to thank the peacekeepers in blue, my former colleagues of the police force. Uh, I know it's hot out there. But guys, thanks so much for maintaining a safe space for us to stand up peacefully for our freedoms. In doing so, you're allowing us to stand up for not only our freedoms, but for yours too. Now, Cost for COVID Truth and creation is basically an accident, but one that was obviously needed in the world. People wanted the hope that there were police out there who could see what was really going on in the world and willing to do the right thing by the people they swore to protect. Today, there are police standing up and speaking publicly in every state. There are police within the forces around the nation using their discretion and will not take action against any person for alleged COVID breaches. Cops for COVID Truth has become a safe place for police to seek support and credible information, assisting them to do the right thing. These are the police that will be known on the right side of history. Now, today, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of the harmfulness of the vaccines, the unlawfulness of the show directions, the harms caused by lockdowns, the divisions being imposed upon our communities, the coercion being imposed upon us because the, your awareness of this is what has brought you here today. I'm going to offer a broad and hopefully grounding perspective, a perspective that will hopefully help you find solutions to get through what we're standing against today. COVID is not a random virus that powers the bead on their best to overcome. COVID is a long planned event against us for the purpose of complete control of every aspect of every person's life on earth. We can see everything we've ever given our power to is being used against us. There's no one coming to save us, and therefore it is up to us. This is a time in history humanity will remember not only for the tragedies, but the lessons that are learned and the inner growth we undertake. This is where we see the systems and structures that are in place and no longer serving us dissolve. This is a time in history we evolve to a connected place, an empowered place, a place people do not let powers outside of themselves dictate their lives. The COVID narrative is a sinking ship. There are cracks and holes all the way through it. Look at how much it upset things when a little constable will put some words on a bit of paper. Look at the energy being used to censor any little bit of truth. Look at the energy being used to try and keep that sinking ship afloat. Now we're going to go through some heavy stuff in the next couple of years. I'm not saying this is over. We only become this when enough individuals feel empowered to move past it. 
If the collective felt empowered in the beginning, the true directions would have gone simply no further than the paper they were written on. So, how do we really turn the tide against this agenda? I can tell you, nothing empowers you more than action. Start performing small actions. Small actions that feel right for you. Any action. What I, whatever idea you have, then perform another one. This is what will empower you. Your confidence will grow, your stress levels will drop, the path forward will become clearer, and you'll inspire those around you. You will awaken more to do the same. These small actions being performed within your community will inspire more members of your community to act, then perform actions as a group and eventually as a community. You will rewire yourselves and your community making your area a safe place and start shaping it to be the way that you want it. I want to give some examples of what I'm talking about here today. Really small actions with a real big impact. So this week alone, my surrounding streets, I handed every letterbox one of the Children's Health Defence Flyers. The 10 reasons to consider before vaccinating your kids. Okay. Simple, anyone does it. If everyone did here did their own street, it would have a huge impact. Uh, we brought some signs with us today, here behind us, who my partner, Annalee, who deserves, deserves more shout-outs than I possibly do on this stage for everything she does. Uh, yeah, quick, simple, effective. They're about 10 bucks each, just jump online and get them. Now, we're putting that template online on the Cost of Poetry and Telegram page, um, or email us and we'll send it to you. You can, you can do that, create your own. These small actions placed within your communities keep the conversations going. They keep them, they make the environment okay to have these conversations and things evolve. Our local community are having needs. You will not believe how many people turn up to these things, how many people want to start acting. This, this is what's going to turn the tide and it's been spoken of from previous speakers already here today. Because of small actions like these in our local community, uh, because of small actions like these in our local community, our local community is evolving. The conversations are opening up. We have been able to form community groups. We meet various locations like our local farmers markets. We have plans for whatever may be thrown at us in the future. The fear is going and the answers to our problems are coming forward. What we are facing is a long game, but the small steps we take are having a big impact against this shaky agenda. You do not want to be, you do not want this to be a time you think back to with regrets for the little things you could have done. The power really is with the people when we find it. Now, for the sake of our children, let's go be the change that we want to be. And thank you all for your actions of being here today. Thank you, everyone. Let's go continue these actions. <laughs>